I'm Bonnie Fong, the board chair for the Chinese American Service League. I am pleased to welcome you to our Food and Thought web series. For over 40 years, the Chinese American Service League has been providing vital services to the community, from assisting immigrants in their dreams of American citizenship, by providing daycare and childhood education services, by caring for our elderly, and so much more. Castle works to enable, inspire, and empower our families by providing essential programs and services. I want to thank all of our guest speakers and the organizations that have supported us in putting this program together. I want to express a special thanks to Bank of America as the premier sponsor for the Food and Thought web series. For over two decades, Bank of America has supported Castle programs, making a difference in the lives of thousands of Chicagoans in need. We thank them for their continued commitment to serve the greater Chicagoland community. Finally, I wanna thank all of you for joining us. Your support makes it possible for us to provide vital services to those in need. Please visit castleservice.org to learn more about our programs and how you can help. Now, on with the show. The racial and economic disparities that have long existed in this country have been widened by the coronavirus and amplified by the most recent acts of injustice. People around the world are coming together with greater urgency to demand action. At Bank of America, we know we all have a role to play to overcome the very real consequences of systemic racism and inequity. This includes individuals, governments, nonprofits, and the private sector. Racial equality and economic opportunity are deeply connected. That's why Bank of America has committed to address critical gaps in affordable housing, access to health care, employment and job skills, and the resources small businesses need to succeed. We can do more, and we need to do more now to further advance racial equality and economic opportunity for all. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to Food and Thought. This is a series of conversation, you know, designed to talk about issues that are important to the community. And we're hoping to answer some questions that may be on your mind. That all of this, of course, brought to you by our entire team at Castle. So thank you to the team behind all of this. Thank you to Paul. And thank you, of course, to our sponsor for this episode of Food and Thought. So a quick introduction of myself in case you're new to Castle or to Chicago. Uh, yes, my name is Judy Sue. I'm a news anchor with the ABC7, actually celebrating 20 years. I just got a note to my email. Happy 20 years. Um, at ABC7, which is so unbelievable for me. And doing something like this for Castle with, with the community, being on TV every night, truly is a full circle you know, moment for me every time because uh, it all started in Chicago's Chinatown when my family immigrated here when I was 11. So thrilled to be back, thrilled to be talking with our guests today about this topic. So now I'm gonna jump right in. I have Emma Yu and and Home and Wong. So pardon me as I read a little bit about their bio because I want you to know a little bit more about them. So Emma, Emma Yu is the current executive director of the Chicago Chinatown Chamber of Commerce. She moved from Germany to the U.S. in 2010 after she completed her master's degree there. She worked previously at Oil Dry Corporation of America as an export specialist and China business liaison. Uh, she used to co-own an export company in Shanghai. Emma is also on the board of directors of CBCAC right here in Chicago. So that's Emma. And then we have Ho Min. Ho Min Wong is a vice president of Chicago's Chinatown Chamber of Commerce and spent a lot of time helping out the chamber, especially during these very difficult times of COVID. So during the pandemic, after the chamber's signature events were canceled, he committed a lot of time, a lot of resources to support other chamber activities, including meal deliveries to frontline workers and emergency food distribution. 
and professionally, because Homa will be talking to us on that front as well, Homa is, is an architect with over 35 years of experience in the construction industry. His architecture practice, Dearborn Architects, located right here in the Chicago Loop area, not far from ABC7. The firm offers construction management and owner representation services, in addition to traditional design services for commercial, industrial, corporate institutions and hospitality projects. Well, hello, Emma. Hello, Holman. Thank you so much hello. for joining us for Food and Thoughts. Hello. Hi. Hello. Um, so I, I, I thought I would start, you know, before we jump into today's topic of business design in your capacity with the chamber in Chinatown, I wonder if you can kind of give us an update. I'll, I'll start with Emma. Give us an update on the status of our businesses in Chinatown. How are we doing right now? Oh, sure. You know, since the spring is, the summer is around the corner, so the restaurants are really expecting that uh, it's getting better in the next few months. I have a positive outlook, and I'm getting a lot of calls recently about people, you know, Chinatown businesses want to, you know, um, take on new projects, do new stuff. That's all very exciting. I, I have to agree. I'm very much looking forward to everything opening up. Okay, so let's talk about our topic today, which is, as I introduced, business design. Maybe not something that a lot of people think about on a regular basis, but certainly is it, it is impacting uh, the industry. So Emma, uh, I'll start first with you. Uh, you know the current precautions, right? Masks, social distancing, capacity limits, they're very necessary, but they are challenging. What are some of the ways that you have seen businesses in Chinatown address these concerns? Well, um... I guess the owners, a lot of the owners are trying to define if this is a temporary situation, how long the pandemic is going to last to determine their next steps. For example, we're talking about, we're, we're talking about if the restaurants are going to change the design or going to you, do anything for the in future because of the restrictions, like opening up their windows, their, their walls, but there is a cost there. And the cost is not only a one-time cost. It's not about, hey, I pay an architect. I pay a um, contractor for, for renewing my restaurant. It's about moving forward the energy fee, the, the heat, the AC every month. So there will be an increase in cost on them. So they're trying to define um, whether they are going to do that. Um, also, you know, with all these restrictions in the past months or past year, um, restaurants are, lose, are losing businesses. As we all know, they're losing business. Um, so some are really struggling. They are paying, they're still paying their high rent every month. They are paying for their employees. They're struggling. They just hope that with the summer coming and with the, the government, with the, the state or the city lifting the restrictions so with all the people, more and more people get vaccinated and the restrictions can be lifted and they can continue with their business. All right, I'm going to bring in Homan. So, uh, you know, I went through your, your bio. I mean, you certainly have a lot of experience in, in design. How much of a challenge would you say this pandemic has posed for, you know, those of you professionally who work on design and, and, and also what are some of the changes that you see uh, restaurants and businesses uh, asking you to help them with? Well, from my perspective, what I'm going to say might, might be somewhat of a surprise. The pandemic actually has not affected the design of new restaurants from a health and safety standpoint. Now, the chain restaurants notwithstanding, people who have deep pockets, and I'm talking about most of my customers are independents, that the COVID-19 mitigation measures are fundamentally at odds with the economics of building a new restaurant. It's very much like the middle seat on an aircraft. At some point, <laughs> you can talk about all you want, they're gonna fill that middle seat. So what is driving is this is the high cost of building materials. You know, a lot of it, it's visible, wood products, piping, wiring. HVAC system surprisingly has gone through the roof. And I think it's because of all the people competing to upgrade their, their systems. But for new restaurants, when you look at the economics of building a new restaurant, what used to be a $200,000 HVAC system now costs as much as a 400,000. So you are, I'm not seeing the kind of request to, to put in all these safety measures. And 
from the health perspective, I think that the only thing that might actually remain for these new restaurants is the staff mandate, um, the mass mandate for staff. I think that's one thing that is relatively low cost. And, and then you leave it up to personal responsibility for the patrons to you know, protect themselves. But as far as the design standpoint, at least from where I am right now and what my customers are asking me, we're not implementing any of those systems. Now, what about for, for new, I, I, I think you, you mentioned it too, for, so for a new building that's being built out right now, right? Is there anything new that, that people are in, in the industry is thinking about that to, to build it in at a cost-effective way that we kind of haven't thought about before pre-pandemic? Yes, and uh, there, there are two examples. One is we're getting a request for hand sinks outside the toilets. And uh, this might be of a, somewhat of a surprise, I guess. Huh. You know, and also in the dining room. Actually, I've seen that before. My customers are asking me to put hand sinks right outside the toilets. But if you go to Gibson's and Oak Grove, they have a hand sink in the dining room. I saw that not too long ago. So it's not a completely new thing. It's just that, um, you know, I deal with a lot of, you know, Chinatown businesses and they are beginning to ask for that, which is, which is very encouraging. I think hand washing is a good thing. The other thing that they're asking for is a hot holding capability for takeout. Uh, right there at the host station. Oh. So that's something that is, you know, important. You know, you don't want the food to get cold. I mean, in the past, when there was, um, takeout was not a big driver of their business. It's mm -hmm. something that you can overlook. But when it becomes a big part of your business, you need to start thinking about the future and how you can actually make it better. I think hot holding is a completely legitimate idea. I think it's, it's going to be something that that is of a benefit. Interesting. Uh, interesting. I had not thought about that, but you're so right. I mean, with the pandemic, so many restaurants having to pivot to completely take out and, and a lot of them have to kind of really readjust the way they do business, the, their, their business model, I think, for a lot of them. I'll bring it back to Emma. Um, I know you, you, you consult with a lot of businesses, right, in Chinatown on uh, this, during this pandemic, moving beyond the pandemic. What would you say, you know, Holman talked about the takeout station. Um, what are some of the other major questions you're fielding from businesses and their concerns and for the for the chamber? Mm, I guess the most concern will be about how they can survive during mm -hmm. and after the pandemic, where to get financial assistance. Um, if they want to, or there, if there is a um, rule there, like for example, in June 2020, the uh, BACP started the, the um, application of the sidewalk cafe. So how did they, how, how could they effectively, um, efficiently apply for it? Where to, to apply for it? Is there a, um, even with the language barriers, where can they get help from? And now, Emma, in terms of the chamber, is there anything that's coming up that you're thinking about? Um, and I don't want, I want you to say anything that you're not ready to announce to everybody, but you know, something different that you're thinking about doing to you know, kind of really invite business back uh, to the Chinatown area. Oh, sure, yeah. So the community, all the organizations, um, Chinatown Chamber of Commerce, we are um, trying to uh, to invite the uh, people invite the visitors back, the tourists back to Chinatown. We are hosting events. Um, for example, the, our Dragon Ball race will continue this this year in August, the end of August. Uh, by all these events, we're trying to uh, attract the people from outside the Chinatown and let them know, hey, we are ready. The restaurants are ready uh, for you to come back to visit, to, to eat, to enjoy the, you know, the good weather and also things a lot of people are getting vaccinated. We hope it's getting um, safer to consume outside their homes. And, and, yeah, and, and Holman, speaking of those kind of outside areas with the summer coming, I want to ask you a little bit about Chinatown Square, right? When you go through Chinatown, you realize down the main street, you don't have those outdoor capacities. Uh, at Chinatown Square during the pandemic, you saw the outdoor capacities. And is that something that you think restaurants are now going to 
even the, the restaurants in Chinatown are going to think about including in their design? Will that kind of continue post pandemic, you think? Yeah, I think it's been a sea change. Um, if you ask me just five years ago, there was a lot of resistance in having any kind of um, storefront that, that opens up. You know, I, you, you see it in the, in the West Loop and Restaurant Row that, you know, us Chicagoans really enjoy the nice weather and be able to open the, you know, the, the big windows in the restaurants to, to get the fresh air in. But there has been a tremendous amount of resistance. For many years, I've been trying to convince restaurant owners to, to do that and let some fresh air in there. Their, uh, their reluctance comes from like, oh, I have, to, I have to pay a lot for the utility bills if I do that. Well, I think that is now slowly changing. If you take a look at, you know, the new restaurant that opened up Kenki, all, all the ground floor and, and the upper floor windows completely open up. And the new restaurants that we are designing right now um, for another restaurant chain, um, there's Chinese run, and they really are turning around and they welcome the idea of having you know, large scale garage doors or some sort of folding doors that will open the inside of the restaurant to the outside. So it's a very positive change. If you don't upgrade your HVAC system, at least you can do that. So on the at least six months out of a year, you get you get a lot of customers. So I add, and I totally agree, totally agree. Um, Emma mentioned a little bit about, you know, the activities the chamber is doing to welcome people back. Uh, from your perspective, Holman, what are you looking forward to this summer and, and how are we going to invite everybody back to Chinatown and visit our businesses? Well, the reopening of Chinatown and to spread the word around that we're open for business is gonna be a very, very welcome change. I think that by and large, um, people know about Chinatown, they understand what it is, but with everything opening up now, especially restaurants are more willing to utilize some of the outdoor spaces, um, in particular at Chinatown Square, I think it's going to be a, a bigger draw. And I think that I predict that our summer event, um, the summer fair, uh, the Dragon Boat, is going, going to be a big hit. I think people have been sequestered long enough and now is the chance to come out and really enjoy life. I, I couldn't agree more. You know, I hear a lot from people um, that, yeah, you know, I know about Chicago's Chinatown. I just haven't been there in a while. And we're talking not, you know, not even just a, a, talking about the pandemic, but of course the pandemic has made everything worse. So if you had to say to somebody who, you know, has that reply, oh yeah, I just haven't been there in a while. Emma, what would you say? What would you say about, you know, come on back? And why not coming today? <laughs> <laughs> or this weekend? And Holman, your, your answer to that? Please take the water taxi from Michigan Avenue. It takes you right to Chinatown Ping Tong Park in about 30 minutes. It's going to be a fantastic experience. I like that. A lot of people don't realize about the water taxi. Um, I have not taken the taxi itself, but I have been right there at Ping Tong Park and you watch the taxis come and go. And people don't realize that you can from downtown right here, like outside, literally like a block from my office. And you can jump on that taxi when the weather is nice and warm and go right. To, you don't have to worry about parking. <laughs> it is fantastic. Okay, one last message before I, I let both of you go. And thank you so much for your time um, and sharing your thoughts on the subject. Just one final thought about, you know, as we are trying to move forward from the pandemic, the resilience, you know, of the community and, and your encouragement as we move forward and seeing the summer and for our businesses and for our community as a whole. I'll start with Emma. Since you mentioned parking, Judy, I would like to say that parking in Chinatown is one of the least expensive all throughout the Chicago. So come with your car, park here, the parking lot for, uh, you can park for three hours for $2 only. <laughs> yeah, you can't get that downtown. Can't get, 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 get that, that anywhere <laughs> else in Chicago. <laughs> Agreed, very good point, very good point. Holman? Yes. Come to our restaurant, try new things. If you haven't had uh, bubble tea before or Tyro ice cream, summertime is the best time to do it. We have fantastic restaurants that serve these two delicacies. I just have to add personally, you know, I have four kids. I, 
There was nothing like that experience of walking through Chinatown, you know, dropping in the bakery, getting a bun, and then go get your milk tea or your boba tea. And, you know, I mean, my mouth waters just thinking about just walking down and that experience uh, of our Chicago's beloved Chinatown. So, yes, get out and enjoy it for yourself. Holman, thank you. Emma, thank you. Thank you for all the good work and your support for the community. Thank you. Thank you, Judy. Thank you.